class. Hi, Ms. Simpson. You're looking good. Um, our cast pod question is, how are the moral conflicts of Frankenstein similar to the development of scientific research today? And Jason will start. Okay, so in Frankenstein, Victor creates life from death, which causes a lot of moral conflicts with the people and even internal conflicts with the creature itself. So it brings up the argument if scientific research should be limited today because an example in Frankenstein is when the creature escapes and Victor isn't responsible for its actions, which causes a lot of conflicts again. And that is an example of how we have to be careful with scientific research, such as stem cell research and, and vetro pregnancy. And Kendall, what do you have to, oh, Brandon, what do you have to say? Well, the, the limit on scientific research will, will be on what would be the purpose of the, the research you're doing. Are you creating clones to keep the endangered animals alive, or are, is an evil genius going to use cloning to create an army for himself? Well, um, I think that, that was a good sort of question, but did Frankenstein really have the idea that his monster was going to be evil? So, was there really sort of a conflict there, or was it just because life was being created? Is that the conflict? What do you think, Brandon? Exactly. Um, he didn't, Frankenstein did not know if his creation was going to be bad. And that's why he destroyed his second creation, because of his fear that it would be bad. It could have been good. Just like if someone invented a microwave. And the microwave is a very useful house appliance today. I, I use it every day, but what if someone took the microwave and supersized it and nuked something? And then that would be bad, but yes, whoever invented would. the microwave would not have known that. So Kendo, what are your thoughts of the Well, cult? we're talking about these moral conflicts in Frankenstein, but for me when I sort of looked to the question, I sort of thought, are there really truly moral issues with Frankenstein, is it wrong, should there actually be a limit for Frankenstein to create life? Is there real, like, is there really a barrier that should be placed into creating life, rather than just, why not create life? I mean, if we can do it, why, why don't we just do it, is what I'm thinking. Good question. Oh, hello again. Well, why don't we create life? Like, maybe some things are better left in the dark, or maybe certain things are better left unsaid and unfound, because once you find it, you can't hide it back again, right? But then there's that fine line of what is good to be found and what is best to be left in the dark. So I kind of think like, why do we have these moral issues? What makes us think that, oh, we can't do that because we're just not supposed to create life? How do we come up with these moral issues that sort of stop us from developing things? What do you think, Vanessa? Um, well, going back to um, the prompt, um, while you guys are talking about Victor, I would like to talk about Frankenstein because Frankenstein also has conflicts in the book too. Um, and there's a quote in the book, I will read it. It says, Of what a strange nature is knowledge, it clings to the mind and once it has, it clings to the mind when it has once seized on it, like a lichen, lichen, lichen on <coughs> the rock. I wish sometimes to shake off all thought and feeling, but I learned that there, there was but one means to overcome the sensation of pain, and that was death. So Frankenstein is basically saying that, um, Knowledge can be very harmful. Once you learn something, you can't really unlearn it. It stays with you for the rest of your life. So I feel the same with um, technology and um, today. So I think that we should be a little bit more careful because what we learn today is going to stay with us because ignorance is bliss and curiosity killed the cat. Well, I kind of disagree with Vanessa. I think that knowledge is power. Like when um, smallpox broke out in the world, like, people were so sick, and it could have wiped out so many more people, but, you know, scientists sort of contained it, and now it's sort of become wep weaponized, but 
you know, whether you decide to, like, use it as, you know, a way of, you know, war or whatever, it's, like, it's up to you. So I think knowledge is power. Yeah. So I think Eileen and Brandon sort of had the same idea about it all depends on what you use it for or how it uses. But when you think about Frankenstein, it's about creating life. And when you create life, you don't create something that you can like necessarily like control it. So do we think that controlling, do, if we controlled it, would it be any better? Or would it be worse if we were to control it? For example, um, the monster. If we controlled it, would it be better? Or would it be sort of bad because we're not letting it free? Oh, okay, so um, I think Victor's um, creation is similar to the way that scientists today are creating like stem cell research and um, looking into like in vitro births and they're sort of the same because they're not really creating life well yeah they're creating life unnaturally and a lot of um, religions would be against that because they think that only God should be able to create life and so I guess it has to do with your religious standpoint and So I have a question for you guys. If you are atheist or you're not religious, should you be able to do this? What do you oh. think? Okay, I feel that um, being able to create life. Well, in in the book, Frankenstein creates. I mean, yeah, Frankenstein creates life in a really kind of morbid way. I mean, he's sewing corpse together and stuff like that. I feel that that isn't right. But versus today, when um, scientists kind of like take the eggs out of a woman and do all that, that seems a little bit more like, like n not that gruesome and stuff. So I, I feel in that case, it's a little bit more okay. But I also think it's the same because you're creating life and it comes from human knowledge. So, you know, it, yeah. Well, I think Religion definitely has sort of a impact in your moral, like what's right, what's wrong, because that's what religion's here for, to tell us how to act, what's right and what's wrong. And I just think that if it's wrong for your religion, then it shouldn't really affect science, because science is a whole other field. For the sciences itself, it might affect them, but I don't think you should stop someone else's research just because you think it's wrong. I don't know, that's just how I feel. Well, thank you, Ms. Simpson, for listening to ideas. These were our ideas about um, morals and limitations on scientific research. Hope you had a blast and learned a lot. Bye! Bye, bye Ms. Simpson. Eight minutes. We should have spun it around and said bye. Wait, why does it say recording now? How do I, I press the red button.